Hey, this is Ina, in with you in the fight back. Now, when it comes to the question of resistance in Nazi Germany, um, we get a lot of conflicting accounts, whether in the mass media or in our history classes. To give an example, uh, taking college level German history and World War II, uh, we were told about a few priests, about uh, the Stauffenberg plot to kill Hitler, which was the, also in the movie Valkyrie, and many times, often if you listen to commentators, resistance of, say, priests or ministers is highlighted, along with various elite members who did plot against Hitler. But resistance against Hitler never developed into any sort of partisan movement that you would see in Italy in 1943 which, and these partisans ultimately did end up killing Benito Mussolini, all power to them for that. But, resistance in Nazi Germany, yes, there were priests, there were elite members of the business world, very few. There were some military officials who did try to kill Hitler. All of this, you know, is true. And those people do deserve praise to varying degrees. But the most sustained resistance to Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime came from that of the German Communist Party, which maintained a clandestine existence from 1933 through 1945. And that is the subject of Alan Merson's book, probably the most comprehensive book available in English on communist resistance in Nazi Germany. The book was written in the late 80s and relies heavily on East German sources, which for many reasons are going to emphasize communist resistance in Nazi Germany. Rightfully so. And this is, of course, in contrast to what I just mentioned about the claims in the West, the capitalist West, which tend not to just dismiss resistance in Nazi Germany if they do ignore the Communist Party, which did offer the most sustained resistance. Now, Merson's figures, he says that there were roughly 300,000 members of the German party in 1932. And he claims that almost half of them suffered some form of arrest or imprisonment in the following 12 or 13 years. And roughly 25 to 30,000 communists in Germany were murdered or executed during this period. Now, when Hitler came to power, the German Communist Party was in the third period phase, which pretty much meant class against class, revolution is on the horizon. And for the first two years after Hitler came to power, they very much acted in this way. They were willing to suffer harassment, terror, and constant surveillance. They were smuggling in leaflets. They were trying to carry out mass organization. They were passing out anti-Nazi literature and even collecting regular dues and filing members. And a large, this centralized party was, despite the her heroism of its activists, a lot of them were arrested probably within six months because, if nothing else, the Nazi regime had a very efficient and ruthless police and spy system. Now, communist tactics would take a change in 1935 with the Seventh Comintern Congress, which moved from a from the third period to the more popular front, and this uh, emphasized more alliances with social democracy, and the social democrats were hoped to bring up bring them into the fold. Although there was some resistance to party circles within Germany, to an alliance with the social democracy. Now, communist resistance was most sustained during the first two years after Hitler came to power. It, the figures of arrest do fall off after 1935, but there were still resistors in Germany, and to highlight the fact, German communists played a pivotal part in the international brigades that fought against Francisco Franco and his Nazi allies in Spain, roughly between uh, four and five thousand from Germany. Now, when discussing Germ German Communist Party resistance, it should be emphasized that even though Russia and 
Nazi Germany had a non-aggression pact from 1939 through 1941, is that the Communist Party was still passing out anti-Nazi literature, still calling for resistance, and they were, like many parties, thrown off balance, and there were some hopes initially that they might be legalized, but this did not come to pass, and the German party remained illegal. However, before the invasion of Russia, there were many resistance cells that were um, forming in Germany, and the party was still organizing workers to what it could. They had con Some party centers had contacts in the military, and they were doing whatever they could, especially as the war heated up with uh, Operation Barbarossa and the invasion of the Soviet Union, to do all they could to destroy the Nazi regime. And a lot of the groups were uncoordinated. Some didn't even really have contact with the central party leadership. And Merson does emphasize that in many respects there was a disconnect between the emigre party leadership in Moscow and the boots on the ground in Germany. Now, German party uh, activists were instrumental in the Red Orchestra, which was relaying espionage to the Soviet Union and warning them of potential attacks. And this orchestra helped in many Soviet operations. Uh, the German party did not really have any contacts with the Stauffenberg group. Again, the, if you've seen Valkyrie, you know what I'm talking about. This was the plot to kill Hitler. But its members were continually subject to arrest. Their leaflets were continually confiscated. And the party pretty much, as Hitler's regime was falling, it was one of the first to really reform in Germany because, in truth, it had really never left. Now, we can say, in conclusion, that Merson's book is a very good book on communist resistance in Nazi Germany. Now, he was a member of the British Communist Party. He is relying on East German sources. You can say what you want about that, but considering the, the silence from people on communist resistance in Nazi Germany, this is a welcome corrective. This book is relatively hard to find. I had to get it used, and it did take some time. But it's showing you that far from being equal Nazism and communism, that in fact, here, these communists were fighting tooth and nail for 12 years. They were, they were the ones, more than any other organized group, who were bearing the brunt of Nazi repression. Again, I'm talking about an organized political group. I'm, obviously, the, the Jews suffered horrendously and as a um, religious group were nearly wiped out. But the Communist Party was the resistance in Nazi Germany. Meersen is doing a good job of rehabilitating that. And to those who are going to equate these Nazism and Communism in lieu of the facts, in lieu of the fact that the German Communist Party was fighting, was clandestine, and was struggling, you know, are, are you, what are you going to say now? Are you just going to ignore this and come up with some lame excuse? But what Meerson does, I think also, in his book, is he really highlights the heroism of ordinary party members who unemployed, some with families, and, and were still willing to take this grave risk of coming out against Nazi Germany. And to and just to read that in the book is worthwhile. So this is Ina saying, until next time.